You and I are both standing in the precipice of a new field of medicine that is basically going to start growing called photobiomodulation. Now, photobiomodulation has to do with the activation of something called non-visual phototransduction pathways. So before I proceed and I lose you, let's look right into this information here in regard to this study. I want you to look straight at the survival rates. What do we have is we have a control group of rodents and basically another group of rodents which are exposed to a light frequency of near infrared basically of 850 nanometers for no more than two minutes, 120 seconds, for five days a week. First for three and a half months, then there was a little break during the pandemic, and then they returned back to the research to finish it off for a month and a half later. And the results were just amazing because even after the photobiomodulation and the exposure to light uh, was ceased, the benefits still continued. And this is pretty amazing. Look at the survival rate, 100%. Now remember, these are mice genetically perceptible to heart disease. 100% survival compared to 43%. And that is just where the fascinating part begins. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna keep down here, PBM, you're gonna read, you see that quite a bit. So it's gonna be photobiomodulation. You're gonna see TGF beta one, and that's gonna be transforming growth factor beta one, which responds very, very uh, favorably to this light frequency of 850 nanometers uh, for whatever reason, we don't know. But still, think of it like uh, how a plant responds to the sun, uh, some sort of internal photosynthesis that works through this non-visual phototransduction pathways. So before we get too technical, let us begin as follows. Shining light on aging hearts. Studies suggest that light therapy might be effective at slowing cardiovascular aging. That's an understatement. The experiment exposed mice to a dose of near infrared light by using an overhead LED source rather than a focused light source. Let's view, of course, for a second. Imagine you're far away from any sort of pharmacological intervention. Let's say you're an astronaut going to Mars. And there's some sort of coronary event or whatever it is that needs to be mitigated. All you do is you take your light, change the frequency, take the exposure recommendation, say, hey, I want to expose you, but I recommend you take two minutes a day of 850 nanometers uh, from two feet from the light and let's improve your condition. Where light becomes medicine, maybe even more effective than the pharmacological medicines themselves and definitely with far less side effects. But again, that's publisher bias and we have to proceed that with further studies. To proceed as follows, the ambient low dose exposure took place five days a week for two minutes each day. One group that genetically manipulated mice gets severe heart disease, which usually causes death. After treatment with photobiomodulation, the heart disease among these mice with heart disease did not progress. The survival rate among the most susceptible group was 100% compared to the usual survival rate of 43%. The results were significant, even though the eight month study was interrupted for three months by the pandemic. The backstory. I'm going to do a lot of quoting, but this gives you the story in context, how this was pretty much not just stumbled upon, but observed and then studied and then experimented to proceed. The researcher began, I don't want to mispronounce the name, so please forgive me if I don't say the name directly. He began his professional career as a dentist. Quote, after tooth extraction, we have to wait for the wound to heal before we can proceed with treatment. I became interested in how to improve and hasten healing. He soon learned that the exposure in the wound to light promoted healing and his interest in light therapy began. How does photobiomodulation work? The studies showed that the production of a substance called transforming growth, beta, um, growth factor beta 1 correlated to exposure to photobiomodulation, suggesting that photobiomodulation triggers the activation of transforming growth factor beta 1. The substance plays an important role in human health and and disease, especially in age-related disease. The researcher said that transforming growth factor beta-1 regulates stem cell activity, inflammation, immune system function that may partly explain why this particular light therapy works. Did a little ad-libbing there. So there you have it, like photosynthesis, 850 nanometers 
for a certain period of time during the day. Uh, basically, uh, transforming growth factor beta-1 responds very positively to it, henceforth making the body happier. To proceed, let's go with the methods. Here you have the mice. I take a small segment out of here, treat it with daily exposure near infrared light. Think the same thing again with cameras, night vision cameras. At 25 uh, milliwatts per square centimeter, um, two minutes each weekday, so on and so forth, for a total of one phototonic fluence, three joules at a square centimeter. And compare it to untreated controls over eight month period. The photobiomodulation therapy was administered for three and a half months. This is where it gets really amazing. Pause due to the pandemic. And then for the following three months, we started again for one and a half months. So I want you to grasp this. Even though these mice or rodents were uh, genetically susceptible to heart disease, the study stopped. And yet, still, after the study began again, 100% survival rate. That's going to be a real interesting study to, to basically um, validate later on. All right, now the results. I'm not going to go through it again, but remember LV means left ventricular. You can see the benefits right there. I'll leave it paused and let us get into basically the discussion. So here we go. Specifically, three months of uninterrupted photobiomodulation uh, treatments showed reduced age associated increases in left ventricular mass in both genotypes, reduced the LV EDV, and reduced the left atrial dimension in both genotypes. Good stuff. Photobiomodulation treatment substantially increased the ejection fraction, reduced the aortic wall stiffness, and improved gait symmetry. Now, this is something they probably did not anticipate. The Basically, the improvement in neuromuscular coordination. So that has to be something that has to be delved into uh, later on in the future. But that was an exciting surprise. So something about this TGF beta-1 in response to the photobiomodulation uh, affects neuromuscular coordination at the same time. Pretty cool. So photobiomodulation represents a non-invasive, non-thermal, non pharmacological approach that requires optimal intensity, wavelength, and treatment time, including repetitions capable of eliciting anesthesia and anti-inflammation, tissue healing, and regeneration. With basically, this photobiomodulation ther therapy has demonstrated efficacy in broad range of neurocognitive and mucoskeletal diseases such as Parkinson's disease, depression, age-related dry macular degeneration, chronic wounds, arthritis, knee osteoarthritis, tendinopathy, and mucositis, among many others. So you see what I mean? If you're far away from something, you can't get to where you need to, if you even want to take a pharmacological agent, um, and just adjust life frequency and let the healing begin. That's what I'm talking, something extremely, extremely simple. To proceed, it is worth emphasizing the subtlety and simplicity of these low-dose light treatments raise exciting future possibilities for non-obtrusive photobiomodulation ther ther delivery with ambient lighting fixture, timed il illuminations within lamps, digital phone apps, and electronic tablets, computer, or television displays. Can you imagine a little stress to what it is, maybe suffering some anxiety, there's a certain light frequency that helps calm things down. You just take your phone, it produces light frequency, and again, boom, mitigation of that potentially negative impact is alleviated. That's publisher bias, but it's still a great path in which to proceed. As proof of concept, this study focused on the changes in the cardiovascular system to a lesser extent on brain-limb coordination, i.e. gait, that observed discrete benefits of photobiomodulation therapy. The correlation with both physiological and functional parameters during the active photobiomodulation treatment, how many times you can say that, phases and weaning during the rest phase suggests that continuation therapy is necessary. While the precise biological mechanisms responsible for this phenomenon remain to be fully investigated, transforming growth factor beta-1 potentially. These observations further highlight the central roles of light in human health and wellness that is gaining much attention. These non-visual phototransduction pathways have exciting new implications for ambient lighting showcasing the putative roles of light as an essential supplement for optimal human health. In the very least, a complement to particular allopathic uh, treatments, naturopathic, or whatever your medical professional uh, basically 
decides for you. Now, overall, it can possibly be a treatment onto its own, but it has to be validated in human models and hopefully sooner than later because you really want to reduce healthcare expenditures down and we know the cost of pharmacolo pharmacological treatments, how expensive it is. Well, science has an answer for that as well. Again, you got to be grateful to the researchers. I love the research and I'm so grateful you watch too because even though we may have a small crowd, those of you that watch, you know, may mention something or repeat it and one word can go a long way. So it's very, very important. Again, gratitude, photobiomodulation. Let's look for more in the future and I look forward to you all once again next week. Catch you next time.